You know, when you are in that place of uh, walking in the kingdom, the kingdom has plans for you that this natural world is not always showing you. So that's why you never get fearful, you never get worried. If you notice, what is the Lord wrestling with the disciples about? He's wrestling with the disciples about not being troubled, not letting their heart be troubled. Their minds had to adapt to the kingdom in which they were called into. They had to recognize that the provisional flow of God was different from what they were seeing physically. And they had to synchronize with that system over this earth system. Whenever you start sowing, reaping is guaranteed. So you have to take the initiative to train your mind for the reaping mantle. The reaping mantle is, is a protector from sadness and depression and backsliding. Remember, why do people backslide? It's because there's something of the past that they believe that's going to fulfill them in the present. That's why people backslide. So backsliding is really an attempt to go back in time to achieve pleasure and satisfaction and fulfillment. Now, imagine something is going on with the brain because why did you leave that? If you left it, why would you return back to it? So obviously something is going on mentally of deception because if you left something because it wasn't fulfilling you, why in your time of seeking fulfillment would you return back to that? So all these are devices of Satan because Satan is a hater of your harvests. The harvest life that you've been called to walk in and that you're now walking in is carrying every provisional desire that you have, even sexually. Everything is provided in the harvest. The harvest is something that a lot of people never get to according to God's schedule. And that's why the Lord is eager in looking and recruiting people that will sow and reap. He's looking for people that will honor him and he can honor them back. And the honor equation will just keep on multiplying and getting greater and greater and greater. So a lot of times we are seeing moments in your life, just like Isaac. Isaac is not seeing visible provision. And he actually wants to run from the situation that he's in because he's in a hard time. But look what goes on. God is telling Isaac not to leave in Genesis 26. So he wants to run, escape, because he's looking at the problems. But here God is allowing the problems in Isaac's life that he needs to return back to the kingdom system. When you return back to the economy of God, everything works together for your good. That's what that scripture means, Romans 8, 28. All things work together for the good of them that love God. You know, as it said, the good of them that love God. Loving God makes you bless God and so into God. That's what love is all about. It's the same way if you see a man and he say, I love this woman, you, 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 you going to look at, you going to study from the outside, see like, well, what did he give this woman? Like, how, how do he love her? Like, well, what, what? What has he invested into her? Do we teach her? Do we pour wisdom into her? What, what's, the, what's, what's the love? And so you recognize that love is a sowing impartation from God to you for him. And it says all things going to work together for your good when you're using that love, that honor, that sowing. And then it says you're called according to his purpose. See, he has purposes for your provision that you're not aware of all the time. The same way when you wake up and the same way throughout the day, you can forget to pray. You can forget to reap. Did you know that you could be sowing and forget to reap? 
because you're not expecting the reaping in the day. You think that is tomorrow. You think that is, is later on. You think that is two months from now, three months from now. And the harvest don't move by physical evidence. The harvest move by mental hope, mental faith, mental celebration towards God. That's how the harvest moves. That something could happen out of the blue because you refuse to be blue. And when I say blue, I mean depressed. So oftentimes throughout the course of my teenage years, I remember when I was sowing, some of the investors would change over time. And it didn't matter if um, one season was over with one investor, I would meet another investor supernaturally by, is by being led by the spirit. Like you don't do nothing. Doing nothing means that nothing happens. Remember, I was doing the teaching on zero. Zero can be different from nothingness sometimes. Because zero, when, when it's in divinity, it's, it's in a place where you are now uh, being guided by the spirit to the next chapter of your life. But nothingness means that, you know, nothing was produced and nothing is being produced, nothing will produce. But zero is is like is like the launching pad, like the uh, runway. Like your plane about to take off to a new destination. So I remember there would be an investor. If that time time came up with that investor, there was another investor. And when that time uh, ended with that investor, there was another investor. And when that time ended with an investor, there was another investor. And I started recognizing. I started recognizing that investors was connected to my flow of sewing because while I'm sewing, it takes my mind off of what I'm seeing physically go on that look negative, that look like a downfall. It look like it's a, it's a backlash. Sewers don't receive backlash. Sowers only receive back pay. You take your notes, write that down. Sowers don't receive backlash. Sowers only receive back pay. There's no backlash in sowing. When you're sowing, you can never go backwards. And when you're sowing, ain't nothing that's happening in God's will that's going to be aborted. You will receive all things and you will receive all plans and all provisions and all health and all wealth. All of it's going to happen. So sowers don't receive backlash. So when you're looking at the appearance of backlash, it's all deception. That's why if a man or a woman get into their harvest, they are worthy to be praised. That same way Proverbs 31 says, a woman that fears the Lord shall be praised. Well, somebody that makes it to their harvest, they're worthy to be praised because they are somebody that they overcame the physical evidence of lies. The things that looked like it wasn't going to happen, according to the natural, they bypassed that and they kept their eyes on Jesus. And Jesus had the supernatural money moving. Isaac was still in a place where all of the finances in the land was not even moving. But Isaac was not looking at that. Just think about that. Isaac was in a place where no money was moving. But yet money started moving for him. So Isaac's eyes, his vision as a sower was not looking at the physical evidence of the earth realm. It was looking at the Lord. Now I want to break this open to you. If you sow and be silent, your sowing anointing weakens. It is financial words that captivate you into deeper sowing realms and deeper reaping realms. 
The same way the Holy Spirit, for him to use you, you got to be in decision mode. If you say I ain't doing nothing, how could the Holy Spirit use you? Because ain't nothing the Holy Spirit going to be able to do because you're stubborn. Well, the same way when you are um, called to speak financial words, you got to be in the mode of decreeing and declaration. You got to recognize that even when you're at your workplace. Saints, the other day I'm walking somewhere. Why me and the um, the money man? I always clash with them all the time. I could be going somewhere, even if I'm walking, and they'll walk right, we side by side all the time. I could be at a random location, and the money man will be right there all the time. How? How? See, money is right in my path all the time. And I can recognize it because I'm decreeing financially as I'm obeying financially. If you're not talking financial words when you're honoring God, your ability to honor God will die off. And watch this here. Um, somebody may say, well, mines don't die off and I don't make those decrees. But let me show you how it died off. You sow without any enthusiasm in your sowing. You don't got no expectation. You're not excited. You're not happy. You just doing it. It's like a woman just going with her husband just because that's her duty. Okay. All right. I'm ready. Okay. Tonight. Okay. Um, you know, tonight is the night. All right, I'm ready. Look, this woman is not pleasing her husband because this is her excitement. She's pleasing her husband because this is her duty. When you sow because it's your duty, you are booty. Man, you, 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 it, it, it's, it's trash, man. It's trash. It's trash because God can read your mind. He know that you just doing it because, okay, this is my duty to do it. So I'm going to do it. Boom. You didn't have no declaration about what's going to come to you off the seed. You didn't praise God uh, that you was able to sow the seed. You didn't say, thank you, Lord, for the harvests and the protection, the deliverance and the health and the freedom and the blessings that's overtaking my life as I honor you. Thank you, Lord, for this new chapter of my life. Nothing happened. Your duty becomes booty. And says this a lot. So you hear what I say, right? When you're not speaking financial words, your son anointing dies off. Now you understand what I'm saying. Because you could say, well, mine didn't die off and I don't speak financial words and I'm still sowing. But look how you're sowing. You are dead while you're giving because your soul not expecting nothing. Your soul not seeing nothing. Your soul not dreaming for nothing. Do you know that God gets angry when you don't dream his word? God gets angry when he don't see you alive in your soul. That's the life of your soul when you're dreaming the word. Start dreaming the word again. Start dreaming the word again. The life of God is in you dreaming the word. When you dream the word concerning your finances, that's what makes God excited. When you dream the word concerning your health, can you see yourself healed? Can you see your blood diseases being healed? Can you see your, your back pain, your shoulder pain, your hand pain? Do you see it being healed? Well, that's the excitement of life. Start dreaming the word all over again. And now your soul is a living soul. You're not a living soul until you start dreaming.